Of course, the U.S. market activity is largely being driven by the debt crisis overseas. Joining us now is Robert Cinch, chief strategist at Lilly Pond. Bob has more than 30 years of experience in the foreign exchange market, and he spent much of that as head of Bank of America's currency strategy. Bob, great to see you back on the show. So it's been about 24 hours now since yesterday's mayhem. So a day later now, what would you say are the key factors driving markets today, which have really come back? I mean, at one point we had lost all the gains for the year in the U.S. stock market. But again, it's recouped that. Well, I think the ECB, uh, at least the rumors suggest the ECB is acknowledging now that there's an issue in Europe. Um, you know, I think the issue that's really uh, come to the fore in the last 24, 48 hours is uh, there are some tensions in the banking sector. You're seeing spreads widen out again, uh, LIBOR, uh, OIS spreads, things like that. So I think that that uh, talk that the ECB may open up a credit facility, certainly uh, taking some of the uh, some of the biggest risk out of the market. So there was some real concern until a short while ago, until these rumors, if you will, of the ECB reinitiating this liquidity facility, right, that banks in Europe could virtually stop lending to one another because of what's going on in Greece? Yeah, this was a, an issue, uh, you know, not not completely dissimilar to the Lehman event where banks became uh, concerned about counterparty risk, uh, exposure to, uh, to Greek debt and maybe other debt throughout Europe. Um, and I think what they really wanted to hear yesterday from the ECB was some indication that they were focused on this issue, that it was a risk, and, uh, and, and they were on top of it. Instead, they got kind of the standard ECB were focused, on, uh, were focused on inflation and not much else. And I think that really roiled markets. What would you have liked to have heard from Mr. Trichet yesterday? Yesterday. Well, you know, he's used this line many times, we don't rule anything in, we don't rule anything out. And uh, uh, they didn't do that yesterday. They, they basically said we didn't even discuss buying securities. Did that uh, surprise you? I think it, whether they, whether they discussed it or not may not have surprised me. The fact that he would say that publicly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, given that, that I think there's a history for European fiscal and monetary leaders to kind of dismiss market concerns. Um, and I think they were advised early on, probably by our Treasury, to, to be very aggressive, you know, shock and awe. Uh, and we haven't gotten that. And so I think the fact that they would, would, would sort of blithely say we didn't even discuss it, I, I think that was a provocation in a sense that they really wasn't necessary. No firm outcome, obviously, to the British elections. Do you think the pound would have been punished as much had we had a clear winner? You know, I think if we'd had a clear winner, if, 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 if Mr. Cameron uh, had a majority, I think that probably would have been a relief rally in the pound. Um, I think there's just a lot of uncertainty now about what comes next. Uh, and in markets like this, uncertainty is not a good thing. And then the euro also. I mean, I think you've got to go a little crazy to go long euro right now. You know, I think there are times when you just want to step back in markets. Uh, liquidity is not good. We saw that yesterday in, uh, in U.S. equities. We saw that in global equities. Uh, and I think that, the, the, again, the situation where there are funding pressures in the financial system, that suggests that it's time maybe to, to step back a little bit. And if you don't have to do anything, don't do it. Give us a sense of when we, we were talking about what was going on in Greece yesterday and the situation there around 2.42 New York time yesterday when we see that clash between the authorities and some of the protesters there. Give us a sense of how that may have impacted impacted markets because you know you're hearing different stories that maybe some trades went awry maybe it was the so-called Greek contagion was it a well, perfect storm? yeah exactly well it, it it may have been a perfect mini storm in the sense that I, you know I don't know if it's a, a perfect storm um, you know like the subprime crisis or things like that how much legs this really has to it but certainly you had markets that had rallied significantly uh, risk appetite that had been built up um, some illiquidity in markets, uncertainty in front of a payroll number, you know, all the things that came together at a, at a point in time, and then maybe some, some technical issues also. So, um, you know, it was a bit of a mini storm, all came together. Um, and again, I think this weekend will be important in terms of seeing whether we get some uh, easing of the uh, financial pressures in the, in the wholesale banking markets. Um, and I think we could get back uh, to what is an underlying global recovery, which is really pretty impressive. And we is saw that in the is that recovery threatened by what's going on in Greece? I think I think what's going on in Greece directly no. Its impact on the ability of the banking sector to function normally, mm -hmm. that's when Greece can become a more, uh, a more global issue and a more significant economic issue. The data we're seeing so far, particularly the, the employment numbers out of the U.S. today, suggest that this is a very solid recovery. Do you think that employment number is possibly what's giving a little bit of support to the markets today? Because it seemed, at the opening bell at least, right, that uh, we were being still overshadowed by these ongoing concerns. And just the uncertainty about what happened in yesterday's mayhem. 
Well, I think when you look at the opening bell, there's often some leftover orders that have to get cleared up. We went down, we went back up, we went back down. Um, so I think that, that the issue really is, do we see some spreading of these funding pressures in the banking sector? Um, and what does that do to concerns about future growth? Because we know right now the global economy is performing very well, um, but we need to have a functioning banking sector. And I think that's where the uncertainty really lies. Bob Cinch is the chief strategist with Lily Pond Capital Management. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you, sir.